Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my podcast. I'm Heimo Scheuch, the CEO of Wienerberger. And today I have the pleasure to have somebody very special with me. Special for a couple of reasons. First of all, I confessed a little earlier that I love Finland. And I've just been there over the weekend and it's a lovely country. And I, I heard that you moved away quite some time. Indeed. But uh, we'll come to Finland in a minute. And uh, obviously also from a financing perspective, because a lot of things are changing around uh, us. And uh, Ayla, you are a senior advisor to the European uh, um, Central Bank, an investment bank, I'm sorry, to the Central uh, Investment Bank. And you have seen a lot of changes in the financing sector. So it will be passionate to talk about this with you. Welcome. Thank you very much for the invitation. You know, I thought um, I'm going to ask you something different. Today we have um, all the, um, the union members of our European unions here in Vienna. They are discussing about the future and what's happening. And uh, they are representing our workers. We have more than 20,000 working for us in different countries. And uh, obviously they are very concerned about the future. Uh, they see what's happening, not only obviously in the construction center, it's a, a sector with a lot of uh, difficult uh, elements, financing, uh, there's not enough uh, sort of help to steer the sector. Construction is very weak in Germany, or, but also in other countries, as you know. And so they, are, um, they are, have a lot of fear what's happening. And so um, I think I wanted to ask you a little provocant question, if I may, at, this, at the beginning. Are we doing enough or is the EU or is other European institutions doing enough to give back confidence to the market? That's a very good question. And I think uh, I don't think you can do too much on that front, first of all. And uh, I don't think that even what is being done is not always heard it. I don't I'm not sure the channels are right. But um, if you work in construction, um, in, in, in principle, I think there is a lot more work ahead. So it's not that the people need to go unemployed if you work in this, uh, this sector. Um, if we talk about all the sustainability and climate agenda and all of that, uh, uh, buildings and real estate are a very big consumer of energy and also source of carbon emissions. So when we talk about energy, I think the first step is always before we talk about how we generate energy, where we buy it, where we get it from, is that we should save it. Mm -hmm. And energy efficiency is such a big thing. Um, and um, I have to say that, that uh, for example, in, uh, I'm from Finland, indeed, as you, as you referred to. And um, there between this winter and the last winter, the energy consumption went down 10%. And this was not because people went to live in caves or, or the factory stopped working or transport stopped working. It was usually done, I think, mostly by people being a bit more conscious and also mm -hmm. um, starting to uh, install heat pumps. They were sold uh, out everywhere. They were reducing the temperatures. And, and you could see that just by very simple measures, before you even spend a lot of money, you can save a lot of energy and you, in your energy bill as well. So I think this uh, this is one of the key sectors to do what we need to do. And uh, one always hears how much money we need to spend. But I don't like the word spend because mm -hmm. this is investing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Either you create a cash flow by investing or you create savings in the future. This is about the latter mostly. So it's not something that you should see as spending like buying something. You are investing in order to save money in the future. So I would like to give... <laughs> assurances that this is a good sector to be in. There is a lot to do and a lot more work to do. It doesn't, of course, apply on every place and for for every 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 person. But in the bigger picture, this is one of the key sectors. I think all of my more than 50 delegates who are sitting next to us in another room, they would agree with you. However, on the ground, the picture is a little different. As you know, I think we, we, when we look at renovation, new build and infrastructure in Europe, in the old continent, if I may say so, we are far behind with renovation rates. You remember that uh, the commission said 3% renovation rate a year. Yeah. We get barely to 1% or a little bit above 1%. So actually, there's a lot more to do. 
and also in the new build when i talk with people here in austria but also germany but also other countries there's a lack of apartments there's a lack of living space and affordability becomes a big issue yes so i think it is really really important that we keep an emphasis on the construction renovation and infrastructure sector by financing it by providing long term financing because otherwise we fall behind and what i see also just to alert you to one aspect skilled labor because obviously young people shy away from a sector that is very cyclical because they don't know if they have a job tomorrow indeed yeah and uh, i would say even if you uh, from a from a financial sector and with your background in capital markets and financing i think you would agree with me even if you provide the tools and the means the politicians need to follow and they need to lead the way because if we want to create a modern uh, a, a europe that shows the way in the transition of what you say from old energy to new energy and also in our way how we live together in society we need to be uh, bold we need to be actually strong in doing something and not weak I totally agree and and if I if I were to be flippant which I really am um one could say that stop using or spending money on subsidies of fossil fuels mm-hmm. and use the money on subsidies on the transition mm-hmm. which we need to do that is money much more wisely wisely spent and uh, of course the um uh, the sudden appearance of inflation and the interest rate shooting up all of a sudden quite strongly it hasn't helped because construction is also quite, quite capital heavy mm-hmm. so um that has stopped in many places just construction totally full stop, full, yeah. totally mm-hmm. so we 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 need to see at least a stabilization so that one can calculate make make reliable mm-hmm. calculations mm-hmm. of what it is and and uh, what you can afford and what you can't uh, and uh, and and that is the first step that we need to see i'm not sure we are there quite yet mm-hmm. People are now already talking about interest rates uh, decreases or cuts by the ECB in second half of 24. Um, with economists, everything is also always <laughs> six to twelve months away. Mm. But I think we need to see that at least at the level of talk, there's a stabilization. Mm-hmm. That okay, we are maybe have peaked and maybe we next direction will be downwards. Um, so. It comes from many different sources, so uh, I think we need to see that one first. I do agree that uh, obviously from the rhetoric it has changed. However, you know when in a sector like uh, construction, it's a lead time of six to twelve months yeah. with projects. So actually, what you can say, twenty twenty four is already a very difficult year because no projects are put together people Indeed. have problems of financing so uh, we will have again a very tough and call it a transition year in front of us but um, i think we need and this is i think industry policy makers and you from a financing side give the confidence that investing is the right thing in the future because everybody has been so obsessed by low interest rates yes yeah and it's very difficult to adjust to the new world it takes time and obviously the rise has been brutal for some Indeed. and then the the whole sector has not been prepared for it yes yeah. and of course also on the client side because it's not only the construction companies but if you are selling for example just uh, uh, houses mm-hmm. uh, or apartments uh, to, to 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 customers they will also have to make their new calculations oh my goodness my uh mortgage is not zero percent it's actually five percent mm-hmm. and that puts a lot of breaks into in, in into this so it's a, it's a whole chain of events mm-hmm. and everybody needs to be convinced that this is not the thing to do but um on the other hand this kind of things just take a little bit of t- stability uh people needing a smaller sp- uh, apartment or bigger apartments having family growing family mm-hmm. moving out of the house this happens everywhere for all, all, all for everybody uh and uh, commercial companies will also need better spaces maybe further away maybe closer to the center uh, all of this um so the need doesn't go away it's a very natural need uh so it will come back but i think we are just now in the phase where everybody had a sticker shock about what happened mm-hmm. and uh, we need to wait so it it's uh, it's maybe a bit cold comfort for the construction companies but the whole the actual need doesn't mm-hmm. go anywhere correct i agree 
You mentioned earlier when you talked about Finland that people used less energy and energy savings is obviously a very important subject. I agree and also us from industry, we obviously optimize as much as we can and do that. But are we incentivizing enough in Europe, people, industries, all sectors, uh, or are just, is this too much talk? What is your opinion on this? Uh, I, I don't think we are. And uh, things happen kind of, uh, kind of quickly. And energy is a, it's a very difficult sector. Like I said, when we talk about energy, first thing is that you have to save energy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, used, we were used to some abundance. We had to produce more energy through uh, cleaner means and also through how should I say local and independent means which is which are two good reasons uh, in addition to the climate which I think renewable energy through for example wind and 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 solar is 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 great because they are produced locally they don't come from mm. half the world away and uh, they are also independent there is no dictator anywhere I'm not thinking about any particular direction no. who can shut off the wind or the sun they mm. they are freely and democratically available and the good thing about such energy for, uh, sources is that once you have built it the fuel is pretty much free and yes you have days when it doesn't there's no wind or there's no sun but we have that with every form of energy we have days when gas doesn't flow we have days when uh, nuclear um, uh, atoms do not collide and I think this whole idea of base load which is always available at cheap prices we, we can we can let go of that mm -hmm. we have to go into electrification and storage of energy storage is the new base mm -hmm. load that's mm -hmm. if I want to to be a bit um, uh, take a shortcut there so I think this this is something that we we, we need to um, understand and do and also diversify the sources of energy um, I was t telling, uh, I was uh, talking this morning to my colleague who is the head of the Vienna office of EIB, and I said that in Finland, for example, we have a fairly good energy mix nowadays. We have quite a lot of both wind and 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 nuclear, and then we have a lot of hydro. So has Sweden, with whom we have mm -hmm. a very fluent market between the two of two countries, and uh, then you have some other forms of energy as well, and. Um, the cost for me as a consumer there in my electricity contract is 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. And I don't even have a particularly good contract. Mm -hmm. And it's fixed price for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is quite a good price compared to most countries in the continent. But that has to do, I think, with the mix that it's not dependent on one source. And also it's pretty domestic, the sources where, where it comes from. So May I just interrupt yeah. on this? And this is, yeah. I think, a very important example that you use here. It shows that obviously this subject is a very regional or national subject because yes. as you correctly say you see a lot of difference between different countries in yes, the eu indeed some have prepared well some look ahead and some are not ready yet yes and therefore i think the risk that we have also in the european union is distortion of competition because obviously some countries that are much more uh, forward-looking have invested and provide much cheaper energy to industry, to the, to the individuals, etc. Yeah. And to get uh, to a, um, a better sort of energy sourcing and availability, it's a long way in certain other countries, as you know. Yes, yes, it is. And of course, I mean, circumstances are not the same. I'm not saying only that Finland was very clever. They were all very lucky, actually. Well, we, have a, we are not a densely populated country. So if you want to build onshore wind, there's plenty of space. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to build offshore wind, we have a long coastline. Mm -hmm. uh, we have hydro, which is natural resource, which either you have it or you don't have. Um, so it's not that everybody has the same circumstances. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it depends. But you also decided deliberately on nuclear power, to be honest, to have a certain base uh, sort of uh, um, availability of electricity. Yes, there we were purely lucky because the last uh, nuclear power station, which was 13 years late mm -hmm. in starting uh, operations. It started operations in spring 2022. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if that wasn't luck, I don't know what was. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, that, and that, that is now producing, I don't know, um, but some depending on the day between 15 and 30 percent of the energy or the mm. electricity so that that was more in the luck but the, the decision made was made uh, almost 20 years ago oh, yeah. uh, obviously within in a very different world um, and there was some years ago there was another decision taken but that was supposed to be provided by ross atom and that was abandoned obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple of years ago um, 
So yeah, luck is also an element in these. But I think it's the the diversity that it's not dependent on one source only. And I think that is a good thing. And I could see that this had started after the 1990s when Soviet Union collapsed and we had a very tough time with the trade uh, collapsing almost overnight, that it has been diversified pretty quietly. And I think that is a thing because, let's say, for example, uh, we have France, who has a very um, big part of electricity produced by nuclear power, which has often worked well. But then in summer 22, half of the capacity was down due to technical problems, due to uh, cooling water mm -hmm. being too warm in the rivers and, and, and mm -hmm. what have you. And uh, they became, instead of being the largest exporter of electricity, they became the largest importer Import, of electricity yeah. in a very short time frame. So, and that I think just shows that whatever your energy source is, diversification is the key. Mm -hmm. Because any one source can, 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 can have a problem, which is a black swan that we haven't really thought about today. So I would really say, like in, in many other aspects of, of, of life, diversity is, is really a key. And diversity and then also let's not forget that we, we need to have good grids. Mm -hmm. In Finland, for example, they said, well, we have so many uh, wind uh, projects now ongoing that the grid company is getting worried that they, they, the grid doesn't have the capacity. You need to have that. Mm -hmm. You need to have connectivity between your neighbor countries. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also a very key because this adds to the diversity and also the, uh, the risk of if you have a good weather, I have a bad weather or vice versa. And Indeed. we can share the risk. So uh, all the whole chain needs to be needs to be updated and, and, and diversified. But you see, when I discuss with you, we are in agreement on those things. Yes. Diversity is yes. very key to everything. But interesting enough, you mentioned the black swan. Mm. Apparently, the black swan only comes when there's a crisis. Yes. You mentioned the French situation. It's you mentioned your situation or now the Ukraine war. Yeah? Yes. And apparently, we are not ready yet in Europe to really do things deliberately long term. Yeah, we always need a crisis to move, yes. which yes. is a shame, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And then the second one is, where you correctly point out, the grid. Mm. We run in, in Europe alone probably 200 production sites. And you can imagine what problems we have with the grid. Yes. We could electrify tomorrow. Yes. But we don't have the capacity. Capacity, indeed. Yeah? And therefore, when you talk to ministers, to policymakers, yeah, they say, well, no, it's very difficult, neighbor rights, all sorts of uh, issues, and f then also the financing for those. Indeed, things. yes. Yeah? The financing, I can tell you, the EIB fun finances all of this very happily. Yeah. So that's that's our bread and butter. And also we have very good experts there who can say, that, okay, this you can, by the way, improve a little bit like there, and mm -hmm. this you can improve there uh, to be more efficient and so on. But but uh, no, I think it, you're absolutely right. People don't, they, they, they look at the very narrow scope of, their own location mm -hmm. and uh, not very far in the future, I'm afraid, either. So what we can give as a positive sentiment to our listeners today is there is financing available. Absolutely. There are the means. We need the good projects and we need to think more in diverse terms, energy yes. locally available, as you say, and, yeah. and, and um, sort of boost this and obviously invest more in the grid. Yes. Yeah? So I would say, is there something like biogas that is also on your agenda or do you see this as a, not as a real alternative? You are more electricity driven or is it some other resources as well? Well, we, we, we can look at anything. Mm -hmm. We have also said that we will look into hydrogen. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not very financially uh, sort of scalable mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, another thing that we are financing, which is not financially yet scalable, is uh, floating wind offshore. Yep. Floating wind. We have financed something in Portugal. We are looking at things in France and Spain, I believe. Um, but it's something that we think that it could be a big thing uh, if mm -hmm. it becomes scalable. It can be a big, big source. Just like 30 years ago, offshore wind in general was a risky thing. We went in there and nowadays it's a, you know, perfectly uh, financeable even by the private sector. So you need to, you need to support the new technology. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Mm -hmm. We also have supported the new battery technology, the Giga factory in Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, and and that I think the public money is, is that's the way we see it. The public money needs to go to these places where there are new technologies, where the private sector is a little bit shy mm -hmm. to take the risk. So we can support it. We have different risk sharing mechanisms also with the, with the member states of the European Commission, with EU. Uh, and uh, 
it can be more widely spread, the risk. And uh, some people say that the public sector or the government should not be picking winners and losers. We are not picking winners and losers. The only thing we do is to avoid the sure losers. Exactly. And that's, I think... And that's, that's comforting if yes. you say that. Yes. Yeah. One question in this sense, and you mentioned also storage of energy. Are we doing enough in Europe on storage right now or on really pushing the research and developing? Yeah, I think not not enough. I think we need to do more. Obviously, when we talk about storage, we talk about batteries, mm -hmm. well, hydrogen as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but, but when we talk about batteries, then there's a crucial question of the minerals. And then it gets into a whole new <laughs> level, the, the discussion. Mm -hmm. we, I think we need to sort out that thing first. If my understanding is correct, is that well, there's one question of who has got access to the minerals Sort of who has got them in their mm -hmm. um, in, in their country, but also it's the processing of those minerals, which is very toxic mm -hmm. as a process, mm -hmm. and that's something that the Europeans have not liked to do. So we we need need to resolve this question as well. We we can't be. Uh, I'm not saying that all trade has to stop and everything needs to be homemade, but you can't have huge dependencies on very crucial mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. Um, so we need to we need to sort that one out first. But this is one of the reasons we probably aren't doing enough. Hmm. May I come back to my initial question? And if I look at um, a lot of people around Europe and workers in factories and others, affordability becomes a real issue. Yeah, and having yes. enough money for your life and energy has becoming outrageously expensive in certain yeah. countries. Um, Are we doing or are policy makers or other decision makers wanting a change too fast? Are we driving this too fast? Are we not uh, thinking about the social inclusion or the cohesion enough? Uh, the social inclusion and as it's called just transition, mm -hmm. uh, it's a, I think everybody agrees that the transition needs to be just, otherwise we are going to have even bigger problems. Mm -hmm. The thing is that it's so um, multifaceted as a problem. It's one thing in one place and it's something else in another place. Um, and how to do it, how to tackle it. Uh, I have not seen one one single solution, which is, but it needs to be taken. Mm -hmm. Usually what one thinks about is that, let's say that in somewhere in rural Romania, we need to close a coal mine and then what happens? Mm -hmm. But this is not only about the coal mines and finding new job for these people. If they want to stay there, you need to maybe build better roads, maybe have a school, maybe have teachers, maybe have other infrastructure. So it's it, it's like a mushroom mm -hmm. <laughs> that just keeps growing, uh, and and it's a it's on a massive societal scale. But we need to tackle it. But also, I think it's it's something that it's it's quite a new concept. When we thought about digitalization and the, phone technology going from landlines going into um, mobile technology. Nobody was very worried about people who, who were doing, uh, who, whose job mm. and livelihood was tied, for example, to the old technologies. Nobody has been very much worried about that. But here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it's rightly so. But it's it's always a question that you have to think about. What do you do with the people who are doing or were doing analogical thing and now everything is digital? Mm -hmm. What happened with them? Where are they? Are they now the people who are uh, in the streets, uh, uh, who are marching? So That's a very interesting issue mm -hmm. that you mentioned, because yeah. obviously you always have the, uh, the risk that you leave people behind. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, also in the country you come from, or our country and others, you have more and more extremists on both sides. Precisely. Yeah. But uh, I think the risk here and w where we need to be careful that we don't leave too many people behind. Exactly. Yeah. And to make somebody understand that the transition is necessary who can't afford it, that's the critical one. Precisely. Yeah? Yes. So from a financing and when we talk about sustainability, um, if I may suggest something, one should put this also on the agenda. Indeed. Because when you finance big projects around Europe, it's not financing only energy uh, companies or industries, but also the, not to forget the people at the end of yes. the day. Yes. Yeah? No, no, th this, is, uh, this is very important and, and mm. it, it needs to come into each decision, not mm. only by us, but by everybody, mm -hmm. all the financial sector and, and of course companies and, and even governments. Um, because this, if we don't do a just transition, we don't have a transition or we are transitioning into a totally different place than we mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. 
And there's to. one other thing, if I may, a little suggestion and on a private note or a company note, if you may say so. We have issued a sustainability linked bond, Wiener yes. Bella, the first one in our history, about 350 mi uh, million euros. It went very well. And we have key, uh, clear KPIs linked to it. So it's very fine. I'm very happy. However, what I would suggest is to reward companies that have tough KPIs even more. You know that in these interest rates, you have a potential step up if yes. you don't get to the targets. Yes. I would suggest a step down if you outperform. That could be also an yeah. interesting yes. option for companies to invest more. I, no, totally, just saying yeah, that, I huh? totally agree with yeah. you uh, on that. And then, I mean, EIB has not, SL, does not, not, has not done SLBs just because you have to be an end user of the mm -hmm. money. I mean, mm -hmm. it's very hard to commit on somebody exactly. else's behalf. And our own emissions, for example, it's, it's uh, minor. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think that has been discussed in the public and between sort of investors and issuers and mm -hmm. think tanks and what have you. It always comes down to the same point. Investors are not interested in products which may have a step down. <laughs> You're so, right. so, yeah. Although it should be because you think if you have a step down, it means that the KPIs were reached yes, or exactly. even exceeded. Yes. Um, so that would be logical, but we are not quite there yet. So one has to talk to the big money also to get them to walk their talk, basically. Exactly. And this is as you're, read, <laughs> you're reading my mind, walk their talk, because they're exactly. saying one thing yes. and actually then comes in the material aspect mm. to say, Actually, it's about the money making. Yeah, yes, to be yes, honest, yes. it's not really about the ESG. Eh, no, yeah? no, it's it's about uh, getting the. Yes. Sorry, I, uh, either yes. I get this or I get better. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, and Indeed. this would be a, a sort of next round of discussions where we can get this closer to the investors yes. and saying, listen, if our, the companies make a huge contribution, yes, why not? Why not then? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I agree with yeah. you there. And one other thing which uh, I would like to provide you with a thought is. We have great technology in Europe. And uh, when I look at industries, and you know, I'm a, lo a lot in Brussels as well with construction materials, we are not good enough in providing this in, in technology to other countries, to other uh, continents. Yes. We could do more. For example, to launch an initiative out of Europe to finance transition outside Europe because it has a huge impact on climate, yes. huge impact if we were yeah. to do that. Yes. So just suggesting when, when talking to the, the decision makers that would be good for our exports, good for our economies and good for the world. Yes. Yeah? No, no. And I think that the, those good solutions, they will be in demand mm -hmm. also. Uh, of course, always a question of money, sure. uh, and uh, everything is usually. But I think it's it's it is something that will become a little bit more widespread. Also, because uh, I'm a big big believer in this Brussels impact or Brussels effect. Uh, I.e., we have a strict regulation in Europe, for example, in the sustainable finance. This is now developing as well, and. Uh, and people will always complain that this is difficult and complex, but at the end, they actually do want to look good. Mm -hmm. That's inbuilt somehow yes. in all of us. And um, businesses or the companies who do business, for example, outside EU, or banks who finance business outside EU, um, if they can say that, well, we have used this best, or our client has used the best technology and we have mm -hmm. reduced carbon emissions so on so much in whichever other country, um, that will look good for them. So I think, I mean, this doesn't happen overnight, and I don't, I can't say which scale it will happen at. But I think the movement is to that direction. Mm -hmm. I, I usually say that yeah, the train has left the station. I know we know where it's going, which direction. We don't know how fast, how many stops it will do, but, but it it's goes. not going back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. It was passionate to talk with you, and I must say. Also, after a weekend in Finland, it's a beautiful country. And not only for the lakes and the forests that I love it, but also for the pragmatism and uh, the sort of uh, calm how your people do things. And they, they do it in, in a very nice way. Yeah? And be, it seems relaxed, but they are very conscious what they want and do it in a, in a way for us Southern European ones and Austrians are more to the south. We, it tends to be longer or whatever, but it's very well reflected. And I think we, we could learn more from you and not for nothing you are among the happiest people in the world. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that has surprised everybody. That, it oh, has, but happy? it's n- not me, actually. <laughs> yes, yeah? yes so. but thank you very much. And I'm happy that you liked it. It's yeah, I do, I do. I go every year a couple of times. And we have good and strong operations in Finland. Okay. So we are very happy up there. Kitos. <laughs> Kitos. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for listening.